Are satellites a danger to the future of astronomy? There are more and more satellites orbiting the Earth. In the coming decades, almost half a million artificial satellites will be put into orbit. This could be serious for observatories worldwide, for the future of astronomy as we know it, and even a risk to all humanity. Do you want to know why? Let's find out. At the beginning of 2022, there were 4,852 active satellites in orbit worldwide, and the number is increasing. The night sky is a resource open to all of us, but it is fast becoming crowded for artificial satellites. Thousands of satellites in the night sky spoil the star's beauty and seriously hamper astronomers' observations and pose a grave threat to space debris. In this case, it's essential to ask, are we reaching a point where the number of satellites in the night sky is becoming unsustainable? Why are they a problem? Starlink sent 120 satellites into orbit below 500 kilometers in May and November, but astronomers grew concerned when the satellites appeared as bright as white flashes in their images. For anyone, artificial satellites go unnoticed since they are not even visible to the naked eye, but for astronomers, it's another matter. Some experts, like Dara Patel, an astronomer at the Royal Greenwich Observatory, said these satellites are about the size of a table. Still, they are highly reflective, and their panels reflect a lot of sunlight, meaning we can still see them in telescope images. These satellites also emit strong radio wave signals, which means they can interfere with the signals used by radio astronomy, one of the branches of astronomy that studies the most distant events in the universe. The worst thing is that this problem will grow as the number of satellites in orbit increases. What could this mean for research? Dr. Clements believes that satellites could impact observations as they sit in the foreground between what observatories observe from Earth and the rest of the universe, meaning they get in the way of everything else that astronomers want to see. This means the observatories could not see any object behind the satellites, be it a nearby asteroid potentially dangerous to Earth or the most distant quasar in the universe. This would be particularly problematic for telescopes that take extensive sky surveys, such as Chile's future Large Synoptic Survey Telescope (LSST), which now faces these satellites that interrupt the observations, since these are moving in the same direction in which the stars move and appear as a line in the images taken by the telescopes, creating images like this. In this image, Starlink satellites caused 19 rays of light in November 2019 at the 4-meter Victor M. Blanco telescope at the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory in Chile. Such streaks threaten the future of ground-based astronomy. What will happen to the telescopes and observatories on Earth? To photograph a star, a galaxy, a planet, or any other object in the universe, Telescopes must point at it for a long time, following its trajectory in the celestial vault, moving slowly to compensate for the movement of the Earth's rotation. Sometimes the movement that the telescopes follow to photograph that object coincides with the trajectory of one or several satellites that appear just in front of the object that is trying to be photographed. An example is the new telescope under construction in Chile which will photograph the entire sky every three nights with enough observing power to see a golf ball at the distance of the moon. Its main project, Legacy Survey of Space and Time, will map the galaxy inventory, the objects in the solar system, and explore mysterious flashes, explosions, and flashes throughout the universe. But the telescope may never achieve its goals if the sky is filled with false stars. New swarms of satellite constellations, like SpaceX's Starlink, threaten to dwarf the actual celestial objects that astronomers are interested in and that humans have admired throughout history. As low Earth orbit fills with constellations of telecommunication satellites, astronomers are trying to figure out how to do their job when many cosmic objects are nearly obscured by the satellite's bright solar panels and radio beeps that they emit and that are detected by radio telescopes. Recent reports from the Rubin Observatory team and the U.S. Government Accountability Office GAO, describe a dire situation in which astronomy is under direct threat. Astronomers say that if left unchecked, 
The satellite constellations will jeopardize not only the future of the Rubin Observatory, but almost any campaign to observe the universe in visible light. How bad depends on how many satellites are launched in the next few years and how bright they are. A few thousand satellites are a nuisance, but hundreds of thousands are an existential threat to ground-based astronomy. Examples are asteroid hunters, who are increasingly finding satellite trails rather than the fainter streaks of potentially dangerous near-Earth asteroids. Astrophotographers find that satellite intrusion ruins their hard work, and radio astronomers are in danger of being blinded to the most critical events in the universe. Professor Martin Barstow, an astrophysicist at the University of Leicester, said some of the problems could be fixed as, although the number of satellites sounds scary, space is vast. So when you superimpose them on the sky, the density of these things is not that much compared to deep space objects. Because the satellites have known positions, their interference with observatories on Earth can be mitigated. If an astronomer takes a picture of a galaxy, a satellite will be a dot on that image or it might appear as a transient burst of light, but we'll know that and might remove it from the image. This will take effort and work for observatories, but it can be done. However, for radio astronomy, things are different. Constellations could be a bigger problem, especially for relatively new telescopes like the Square Kilometer Array (SKA). The radio signals the satellites use will differ from those astronomers look for, but they could still interfere anyway. Some satellites, such as the Starlink Mega Constellation, greatly reflect the sun. To solve this, the SpaceX company added black paint to the satellites, which makes them look darker. But this is not enough, since even if they are dark, powerful telescopes see them anyway. Another concern is that even if one company fixes all these problems, nothing guarantees that the rest of the private and public companies in other countries like China will be willing to have all these considerations for astronomers. And if we forget about terrestrial telescopes? Many scientists think that perhaps a solution would be to forget about building telescopes on Earth and focus on sending more telescopes like the James Webb into space. But this presents many problems, the main one being money. For example, with the money allocated to the construction of the James Webb telescope, up to 15 telescopes could have been built like the Very Large Telescope, which has adaptive optics technology that allows them to see very distant objects and suppress the turbulence that occurs due to the atmosphere. Also, since radio telescopes are gigantic, no spacecraft could take a radio telescope into space. Finally, we have the problem of maintenance. When telescopes are sent into space, they are entirely out of human reach. The only exception was the Hubble Space Telescope, which could have repairs because it was close to Earth. But most space telescopes are not close to Earth, and if they have a fault, it is impossible to go to repair them. For this reason, space telescopes are impossible to update or maintain. If something breaks or fails, it cannot be changed, contrary to what happens with telescopes on Earth. Also consider that space telescopes are first tested and calibrated using measurements from ground-based telescopes, not to mention the telescopes like Hubble or James Webb communicate via radio signals intercepted by radio telescopes here on Earth. In short, space telescopes need those on Earth. That is why if satellites hinder the operations of terrestrial observatories, they also hinder the operation of space telescopes. We can't stop using ground-based telescopes only because artificial satellites obscure our view. A risk to humanity but this not only represents a risk for astronomers, but also sent a risk for humanity. It considers that terrestrial telescopes are only ones capable of detecting objects with dangerous orbits for Earth, such as asteroids and comets. The International Asteroid Warning Network comprises various observatories and telescopes worldwide that monitor all objects that have orbits very close to our planet. If satellites interfere with these observations, they could inadvertently hide an Earth-bound asteroid from us, and we won't see it until it's too late. Finally, one of the most critical dangers would be space debris. On February 10, 2009 at 1656 UTC, the first in-orbit accidental collision between two satellites occurred at an altitude of 776 kilometers above the territory of Siberia. An American Iridium-33 communications satellite and a Russian military satellite 
Cosmos 2251 collided at a speed of 11.7 kilometers per second. Both satellites were destroyed in the impact, producing more than 2,300 traceable fragments. A third of them entered the atmosphere, disintegrating due to friction, the rest still orbiting the Earth today. This event caused concern in the scientific community, since it was seen for the first time how severe collisions in space can be, because although in principle, two well-monitored satellites do not represent a risk to anyone, when they are impacted with the debris of other artifacts, the fragments caused by the impact are dispersed, making it much more challenging to track them. The main problem with space junk is that it is not sitting still in one place, but orbiting the Earth at extremely high speeds. There is debris from spacecraft currently traveling around the Earth at a speed more significant than the speed of sound. A two-centimeter piece of paint can cause a mess at these speeds. The number of fragments and debris, their combined mass, and the total area they occupy in space have grown steadily since the beginning of the space age. With the launch of thousands of new artificial satellites, this number could increase significantly. According to ESA, this trend has been fueled by the large number of spacecraft and rocket stages that have disintegrated in orbit and the constant launches to supply the International Space Station, the ISS. The total area occupied by space debris is essential as it is directly related to the number of collisions expected. Collisions between space debris and working satellites are expected to become the primary source of debris generation, surpassing even those produced by humans. In the last two decades, an average of 12 accidental fragmentations have occurred in space annually. Unfortunately, this trend is increasing because more fragments are produced with each collision, and the more fragments there are, the chances of collision increase a cycle that feeds itself. These fragmentation events describe moments in which debris is generated by collisions, explosions, electrical problems, or the simple detachment of objects due to the problematic conditions of space, usually paint chips, solidified fuel and rocket engines, water that becomes on ice, etc. With the joint efforts of all space agencies and international organizations, the amount of space debris we launch yearly is gradually decreasing. However, the debris launched in the 1960s is still in orbit, so to remedy this, different methods have been proposed that aim to clean the space around the Earth from space debris. ESA's IZN-1 Laser Measurement Station in Tenerife, Spain has developed this method since 2021. Although it is not ready yet, it is already showing the first signs that it can be successful. It is also possible that soon the entire astronomical community, together with the International Astronomical Association, will propose measures to mitigate the impact of artificial satellites on astronomical observations, but this will require everyone's effort and collaboration. And you, do you think that in a few years, the night sky will be full of artificial satellites? Or will we be able to find a solution to this problem? Let us know your opinion in the comments.